Hey, happy Friday. This week, we're going to talk about how food delivery companies make money and why you shouldn't feel sorry for them. We're going to talk about how Android updates are getting a little less terrible. And we'll also talk about how now is actually a pretty good time to beat Facebook. So welcome to the Friday Checkout. Okay, my pick of the week is gonna be a weird one and it is Uber acquiring a food delivery company called Postmates. And uh, this is a weird topic for me because I usually talk about gadgets and stuff, but I used to work for a company called Delivery Hero. They were a food delivery company and I think most people wildly misunderstand this industry. So I just wanted to give everyone a quick explainer. The narrative that I keep seeing in media about food delivery companies all the time is how ridiculous this whole industry is because almost all the companies in it are unprofitable, right? Uber Eats is unprofitable, Postmates is presumably unprofitable. How is it even possible that one unprofitable company acquires another one for $2.6 billion, right? However, I think this narrative is kind of broken. If there are four competitors for food delivery in any given city or country like there are in the US, for example, then this is indeed a wildly unprofitable business. Why? Because none of these companies have any effective way of differentiating themselves from their competitors. Right? Consumers don't care if their delivery guy is wearing a yellow backpack or a red backpack. All they want is for their food to arrive. And none of these companies can really introduce anything new feature-wise to the market that the others can't effectively copy in like three days, basically. So really the only way they can compete against each other effectively is with money. These companies are all spending insane amounts of money on marketing, on giving you free coupons and giving you free deliveries, anything to get you to start using their services. So they're all, of course, heavily bleeding money. And that means that anyone who has the most money to bleed or is bleeding it the most efficiently, I guess, is eventually just going to win. So all you have to do is outlast your com competition and you're basically just bound to become a monopoly almost naturally, unless, of course, there's some sort of regulation stepping in. So that's why in the food delivery industry, even though there are many brands, there's actually only a few companies that own all of these brands they are essentially playing a game of monopoly with each other. They're constantly buying, selling, and swapping brands between each other, just basically with one goal, which is to establish as many monopolies in different countries as they can. In Germany, there were five major food delivery brands just two years ago. Today, there's only one. All the others were either sold to this company or went bankrupt or left the country. They basically all just gave up the fight. And that completely changes the equation because the company that is left in any country such as Germany can suddenly raise their commission rates from something like 10, maybe 12% over to maybe 20, even more. They can stop uh, spending as much on marketing. They can give you fewer free coupons, fewer free deliveries, all that kind of stuff. And suddenly they can become wildly profitable. So if you meet anybody who's scratching their head over why all of these companies are still in business when they're apparently all losing money, who's financing them, then now you know. There is a game plan, it's just that that game plan requires them to first either kill or acquire all of their competition and to become monopolists. All right, my win of the week is just gonna be a small bundle of positive news about Android updates. And we're starting with a story from Google that says that Android 10 is by far its most quickly adopted version of Android yet, with apparently over 400 million devices already running it. That's about 20, maybe 25% of the whole Android population, which according to me is not a whole lot, but still significantly better than whatever we had in the past. And according to Google, the improvements are primarily coming from their projects like Project Mainline, like Treble, basically all the work Google has done to break Android down from this one gigantic piece of code to little components that makes it much easier for manufacturers to actually create updates and to push them out to their devices. And in other Android update news, LG and Samsung are both bringing their new flagship software features from their high-end devices over to older and maybe more mid-range devices. So LG is apparently bringing their LG Velvet UI, the software skin, over to previous generation LG flagships, which I think is a first for them as far as I can tell. And Samsung is bringing a lot of the S20s flagship software features like single take mode and manual camera stuff over to mid-range devices like the A51 and the A71. Not huge news, that kind of should be working this way, uh, but uh, I like seeing this and it's a good trend, so keep going. 
And my fail of the week is gonna be Facebook desperately trying to copy TikTok. So you might have heard by now that India banned TikTok. The US is apparently thinking about banning TikTok as well. And obviously this is creating a huge, huge vacuum in the app market. And many companies are jumping on this. There's competitors like Byte that have shot up in the app charts. And of course, Facebook has made clones of TikTok already. Facebook has desperately tried to beat TikTok for years. And of course they haven't because they're terrible at creating anything innovative themselves. They can only really acquire other companies. And they've tried to make their own clone of TikTok called Lasso. And uh, uh, this might be a surprise to you, but nobody liked it, nobody used it. So Lasso is dead. They just announced that they've killed it. And they've also made a new product called Reels. Reels is also a complete carbon copy of TikTok, but unlike Lasso, this one's actually built into the Instagram Explore page. So that's its whole claim to fame. And that is coming to India in the coming days. Because of course it is, they can't actually make anything original themselves. If all we're gonna get out of this TikTok ban is basically a copy of TikTok, except now it's owned by Facebook and somehow jammed into our Instagram feeds, then I will be a really sad pet. So I really hope that another company, maybe Byte, maybe if you know how to build apps, please go create the TikTok clone, whatever it takes, save us from this future. And talking about building apps, let's actually talk about Crowd, the app that I'm building for tech enthusiasts like yourself. We've actually crossed a pretty significant milestone last week. We now have over 300,000 product ratings in the app by Crowd users like yourselves. So thank you very much for everyone who's reviewing the products that they own on Crowd. And we've taken all of those reviews and we've created our first ever buyer's guide. We basically took an in-depth look at the various ratings from the five most popular pair of wireless earphones on the Crowd app and wrote a summary on what's good and what's bad about either one of them based on the feedback, of course, of real owners who actually know what they're talking about. I love data, so I love this. You can find the link to that in the description. So check it out and let us know what you think. Like every week, there's of course a tech knowledge quiz as well. We have 20 brand new questions for you to test your tech knowledge on. We made it extra hard this week because apparently you are all masochists and you really like difficult questions. Um, as always, if you get 15 of them right, at least you can choose to get an invite code to Crowd if you want. And you can then go and start reviewing the products that you own in the Crowd app. So take a look at it and let us know what you think. All right, that's it for this week's Friday Checkout. And uh, from what I can tell, many people haven't noticed that this is a new channel. This is my second channel. So if you haven't noticed that, and if you aren't subscribed to that yet, be sure to subscribe and uh, I'll see you next week.